Hi, my name is Charlie Fitzroy. I'm the CEO of Bradhead Lithium. Bradhead Lithium is a AIM listed lithium explorer with assets in North America, primarily in Arizona and Nevada. What makes us unique is the fact we have three types of lithium assets. We have brines, pegmatites, and clay assets. We've got brines up in Nevada, clays, and pegmatites in Arizona. And we were very well funded at the end of May last year. So the correction this year, we had 16 and a half million US in the bank. Um, very well funded. We're funded to our programs to mid um, to late next year. Very strong position as a company. And also, uh, as a lot of market companies recently are, our shares were very cheap right now. So we're in a fantastic position. And uh, we're here to talk to Matt. Charlie, good to see you again, sir. Um, we will, actually, we did a technical uh, conversation last time. I'll put a link to that below so people can get into the, the three different types of uh, projects that you've got going on. But look, look, you referenced it. So let's talk about it. The market's come off. Your shareholders have been selling off, uh, like many others, admittedly. But why, why do you say this is a good time for you? Well, we... I have a very strong position as a company. You know, we are unique. As I said, we've got the three types of lithium. We're doing work at all our projects at the same time. But, you know, that's great. But the key thing is we did a raise earlier this year before the sell-off happened. We we're very luckily timed. Did a raise at when well, our share price was up at 15p, raised just under 13 million US. So we're very strong position. At the end of May, we had 16.5 million US. And that's not taking into account the 5.5 million, which will come to us when we increase our resources that are clay assets, because we have a royalty in place with Lithium Royalty Corporation. So we've got a really strong balance sheet and lots planned. We got one drill program, drill permit through for a portion of our clay asset base in North. We're going to be getting the permit through a basin east extension. When that happens, we'll start drilling at, at our basin project, which will feed into an increased resource at the end of the year. At the same time, we're doing metallurgical test work on that. And this is all going to feed into a PEA for next year, which will combine with our basin west and west extension. Okay, so that's the claim. Sorry, go on. Okay, no, sorry, sorry. okay. So, so there's there's a lot of optionality in terms of what you can do because you've got the money to do it. Have your plans changed any given this dip? You know, because you, you can see investors are kind of hands, you know, risk off, cash in hand. They're feeling nervous. You don't seem to be reflecting that. Yeah, well, you know, we're in a strong position. So for us, you know, we had a plan in place, and that's what we're doing. And you know, we've got now we've got the funds to do it. We don't need to come back to the market. So with the funds we have. We're going to be able to drill at the pegmatites, drill at the, drill at the clays, and also drill at the brine. So we'll be showing the market what we have and what the value of our assets is without coming back to the market for further funds. And that's why our share price now is a fantastic buy to buy in. Okay, well, okay. Let's let's get into the projects proper for people new to this story. So we, we, you've got you've got brines, clays, and you've got pegmatites. So um, last time I spoke to you, they can't be focused heavily on the clays um, and. You know, there's a bit of met work that's happened. I think you've announced that to the market, but is that still the flagship project or do the pegmatites, which are going to be cheaper, they're going to be quicker to get into production? Um, and, you know, and quite frankly, they're probably the simplest technically to solve compared to a DLE, or sorry, a clay type um, project. Do, will, and it comes back to my earlier question, you know, do you stick with the plan or do you, you know, are you a little bit more agile? Do you need to be? Well, the plan's always been to work on all three assets at the same time. And now with the funds, we can do that. The clays are going to tick along in the background. We're going to be drilling up the clays, doing the met work. The pegmatites, you know, we've got our permits through. We're just waiting for the bond adjudication, which we threw very shortly. At that point, we're going to mobilize our rigs and start drilling. As you said, you know, pegmatites, it would be a game changer for the company. Because right now, you know, we're, we're valued basically on our basin project. We're not valued on the pegmatites, we're not valued on the brines. And if we can show to the market that our pegmatites is the real thing, then it's going to be a game changer for the company because our valuation is going to skyrocket. Because as you said earlier, pegmatites are much easier to get into operation. They're quicker. It's very well understood. You know, 60% of the world's lithium comes from pegmatites in Australia. It's a very proven route. It's much lower capital costs and you're producing an intermediate product, which is much easier than an end product. So it's a fantastic opportunity for us as a company. Okay, Let, let's get into the, into the weeds now. Okay, I, I, I get you know, what it could be, but you've actually got to deliver that. So it could be a game changer. What do you need to do to ensure that it is a game changer? Well, the first thing is this pro drill program. We've got 30 holes planned. We've done geophysics last year. We've done a lot of mapping, surface sampling, channel sampling, and we've done recently done a 3D modeling exercise of SRK and the results will be coming from that shortly. So all this has led to our drill targeting. So we're targeting two positions, one on the central bit, one on the northern bit um, of San Domingo, our pegmatite district. And this will show us this initial program. We're doing 30 holes, 15 at 150 meters, 15 at 300 meters. And this initial program will demonstrate our thesis, whether 
we have a zone paper type system which extends at depth and that's what we're hoping and that's what this program is, is trying to prove yeah it's very exciting we we try not to get too excited about it because we haven't drilled there yet and you know it, it's what the company is really focused on right now alongside of the clays okay so okay that's great but you're going to need to demonstrate scale and you know go, go through the usual motions of spending money to you know expand, expand the scale of it work out what the economics are etc cetera, etc cetera. as a small company three projects three different technically different um lithiums um are you are you going to try and move this forward, all of these forward yourself? Are you considering at this point bringing other people in, farming one or more of these projects out? And, and if you are going to do it, how? Well, the clays and the pegmatites are both centrally located around Wickenburg. So we can have one central hub to do those two projects. And that's what we've been working on at the same time. That, that's not an issue. The brines up in Nevada, yes, they're further away. But I know the, a brine drilling project can be uh, simpler than a clay project or, or a pegmatite project. So it's easy to manage. But we are looking at potential for JVs with the brine projects, which are further away. They're slightly different than the clays. They're slightly different than the pegmatites. So that is an area we would look into potentially doing a JV with, which would share our risk and share our costs as well. Right. Okay. And, and talk to me then. So while we're while we're doing the regional bit of this conversation, Nevada and Arizona, obviously, two. Different states, but I think anyone who works in them would claim they're both tier one. What was the reality for you on the ground um, in terms of, is it getting more expensive? Is it getting harder in terms of red tape? Is whatever the, the government's saying at federal level, is that being reflected at state level in terms of enthusiasm for projects like yours? We're having no problem getting our permits. You know, We've got our permits through Nevada really quickly. We've got permits through to do a shadow draw program at Nevada within six weeks. Um, our permits at Wilson, which is our brine project, again, you know, less than six weeks, fantastically quickly. In Arizona, things take a slight a bit longer. Um, it's just a, due to you know everyone's COVID problems, um, staffing problems, things like that. Just make things take a bit longer in Arizona. But we've got our permits through. We've got permits through from Basin North, San Domingo. We've had no issue whatsoever. Wiki up, Wiki up drill program, which and we put the results out quite recently, which really exciting again. But we just need to do some more work there to understand it. We had some really good intersections of mineralized clay. Um, so yeah, we're having no problems getting our permits. Um, from what we've seen. Uh, things resistance is reducing so you know it's not a straightforward as as it could be but it is getting easier definitely right and what about the, the cost side of things obviously we've seen reports from all around the world about costs rising access to skilled labor you know all of those wonderful in, in inflationary problems that um, people have to deal with uh, well, again what's it like on the ground the drilling market in the u.s remains excessively tight um last year it was very tight and again this year as well um we've managed to get drillers locked in for some time ahead of it, our projects because we need, we need these drillers to be able to do what we're doing. So we've luckily got very good relationships and thought ahead so we get planned in you know, six, 12 months ahead of what we need. So we're, we're locked in, so we're very good there. Okay, so, so okay, that's interesting. Um, and Okay, the pegmatites we get, the 30 holes, we'll see. And, and obviously, the, the pr is it again on the ground? What's the reality of getting um, assays back in a sort of timely fashion? Or is that Okay, it's something you need to pay extra for. Again, it's it takes time. You know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of work while it's the drilling market is so tight. So assay labs again uh, are slow to come back as well. It takes between six to eight weeks, maybe longer, depending on how busy it is, um, to get assays back. So it, it's not the quickest. You can pay extra to rush it, but then it adds your costs go up dramatically. If you're paying double cost, rush it through in two to four weeks. Right. Okay. And what, what I'm trying to do is kind of put together your statement earlier. Of, um, now's a good time to buy because you're cheap. Versus the the things which will kind of move the dial, I suspect, will be you know when the assays come back from the lab, um, and what, what what you know do they meet your expectations, um, and will the market react? So, it, timing wise, it, it you know retail came through a tough moment. They're trying to work out where the bottom is. They're trying to work out whether what the risk is and whether whether or not they invest their disposable income into into stuff. And like timing is everything. So, you know. To create a game-changing moment, a game changer that, that you, you talked about earlier, do you think it's the assays are going to be enough? The drilling will be enough, or will that come later down the line? Well, the assays will be a really good insight into our drill program. So once we start drilling really shortly, likely to be this month, any intersections of paper type which we get, we will put out there before the assays come back, which will show what we found, and then the assays will follow six to eight weeks from that. So we start drilling this month. We're going to get. Results within, you know, feeding into August, September, assays back September, October, maybe November time. And then 
we'll finish our program up with the drill program will take four months to drill four to five months potentially and the last assay is we're back six to eight weeks after we finish so you're looking at six months potentially to get everything finalized from when we start drilling right okay okay and if we <clears throat> just nip up to arizona um <clears throat> sorry with the clay the clay project um you know, you, you, you've done quite a bit there and we've talked uh, extensively about the, you know, the metallurgy last time out and, um, you know, what you feel that project can, can bring to the table. But in terms of the exploration growth component to that story, what, what's to come in the next sort of six months? Can you give me a bit more detail? Well, yeah, the Arizona project and um, so sort of the clay project basin, that is actually a smaller drill program than we have planned at San Domingo. So San Domingo got 7,000 meters planned. Um, you got a lot less at basin. So basin north, and Basin East extension. We've got about 20 holes planned on Basin East uh, extension and then another 10 holes planned on Basin North. And these are much shallower because the clay deposit at Basin is you know, in the top sort of 300 feet, three to 400 feet. So you're looking at a, a much sort of shallower deposit. And with the clay, it, it, the upper grade zone, which we're chasing is in even the shallower portion as well. Whilst the pegmatites, we're drilling to 300 meters. Mm. So you're looking at close to a thousand feet. For, for the holes. So it's a lot of a shallower program, a lot less drilling. And again, because of that, the assays will come back quicker and we'll finish the program more quickly. Okay. And so much if I just talk about the market a little bit more, because I'm sort of, in, I'm just a little bit perplexed about, you know, what's happening in the marketplace. Obviously, lithium went on a tear and I think companies like yourself are the beneficiaries of that, you know, from the beginning of the year. Uh, it's, you know, prices have come off uh, across the board with the copper, copper and nickel, or you know, even even precious metals. Um, the market is definitely in a reset moment at the moment. But in times like this, you can take stock as to see you know, who's doing what, what, what projects, what business models are working. I mean, as when you're looking at the your lithium uh, counterparts, perhaps a little bit more advanced in you know, development stage, moving on to production. What are you seeing that you like? You know, what what's working in this marketplace? Because it, it won't necessarily be the case of we need all of the buffer lithium, will it? Yeah, well, it's you, you're right. You're very much right. It's it's a, it's a it's a very good market right now to buy into lithium stocks. You know, we've had a, a drop off since earlier this year, and we were up at 17p. Now we're down at 7p. And we've got a mix of lithium assets, which makes us quite unique. Um, you know, a lot of the guys like Lancet Lithium are down very well. They're dropping off. But again, that's pegmatites, which is what we're drilling at very shortly and where we see potential valuation increase for the company. A lot of the North American clay guys that are doing very well, um, they're pushing towards development, which would be fantastic for us as well. Obviously, we have Bacanora, which got bought up by Gang Bang. And now it's a bit, you can't really see into that, what's going on in that project. But the, you know, American Lithium, Lithium Americas, um, Cyprus, all these guys are developing projects and the closer they get to development, the closer they get into production, it's fantastic for us as a company. So it's going to increase the confidence in our projects. Yeah, it, well, it, it will in the sense that um, I guess now more than ever, or certainly for a long time, it shows that companies can get financed into production, the, the money is there. Um, but you've got to kind of insert yourself into an ecosystem. So you're, you're on AIM, your projects are North American, um, what do you clearly that fits into that ecosystem quite nicely? Do you look to TSX or uh, NYSE listing at some point? I mean, at this level, it's it's hard to make accounts and spending the money there, but maybe that's what it's going to take. Yeah, we we are in the process of looking at TSX V listing because it makes complete sense, as you said, for us in North America, and there's a lot of valuation. Um, potential in North America and also Australia for lithium companies. So we looked at both and for us, it just made sense to look at North America over, over ASX. And we are in the process of really seriously looking at TSXV. Hopefully we'll have some news next few months about that. Okay, okay, good. So we've got a young investor in the background as well. That's, that's good. We, we like to start them young, start them young, Charlie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, look, um, I, I th look, look, I appreciate the update. It, it to me it sounds like you you either timed it perfectly by choice or you timed it perfectly by luck. But either way, getting that money in when you did, I think, is allowing you to kind of ride the storm, um, this, this temporary storm that we find ourselves in every now and again. So um, I think that's going to be quite useful for you. So let us know when some of these drill results start coming through and you, you get a sense of what you're seeing down there at San, uh, San Domingo. Um, really keen to see what that does, because as you say, potentially a game changer for you. Well, yeah, at San Domingo, it, you know, it's, it's one of those areas which we're excited about. It was mined back in the 40s and 50s, um, really good grades at surface. It's a nine kilometer strike and what we've seen so far, we get you know get very excited about, but I don't want to put too much out there because 
the drills starting soon, and then we can really get the results out whilst we get some some core back. 